Hi friends. So good to see everyone. Johnny Goodmanson here. I am uh, having the distinct honor of being able to bring you a teaching today. I'm going to talk a lot about stress and our bodies. So let me introduce myself um, and then we'll kind of go from there. Um, as I said, my name is Johnny Goodmanson. I am the Director of Programming for Revelation Wellness. I have the honor and privilege to put together a lot of our challenges, um, work with the collaborators who are writing and bringing the material together, and then also um, our review. So all the classes that our instructors take that kind of train them in the niche areas that they're going to be working in. Uh, so that's what I do with Revelation Wellness. In my career, um, I am a trained pastor and I love, love, love movement as a way of learning to embody our faith. And I did that for a long time as a massage therapist. So I've been a massage therapist for 22 years. And in that 22 years, I taught a long time for the massage college that I actually graduated from. So I graduated from massage college uh, when I was I think it was just such a baby. I think I was 21 or 22 years old. And I taught for a long time traditional Chinese medicine concepts and things like that. Things that help us to understand how our thoughts affect our bodies. I was in Platoon 2. Can you believe it? I was in Platoon 2. I think there were like five other people with me. We got a lot of individual one-on-one -on -one attention and it was wonderful um, because we got to learn so much about what it looks like for what we believe about Christ to be expressed in our bodies. So that's just a little bit about me. I am a nerd loving all things anatomy and physiology. So I also, as part of my um, after massage training, I taught at the massage school that I graduated from, from, from a really, for a really long time. And so at that massage school, I started teaching at the cadaver lab. So we had a cadaver lab and I started teaching anatomy and physiology and pathology, all those concepts um, that just kind of helped the students um, become the, the, the best body workers they could be. So that's kind of a lot of my background, and I'm here today to talk to you about those emotions. Um, how we hear, I'm sure you hear all the time, um, because there are a lot of psychological terms right now that are buzzwords, and I'm going to kind of address those and talk about those, because this challenge coming up, Project Stress Relief, it has an emphasis on stress and helping us to deal with stress in our lives. Well, what is stress? We have to define that, because I think sometimes we think about stress, we immediately think, I've got a lot on my plate. I've got a lot of pressure in my life, and that's stress. That's kind of all we think of when it comes to stress. Well, I want to talk about that and, and deal with that just a little bit, but I got to kind of back up and we got to look at um, thoughts first, because thoughts in general are very neutral. Uh, thoughts are just a, a thing that pop into our head. They're actually made of energy. They actually are not a matter you could measure it or touch it or cut it open or dissect it, right? They're, they're made of in energy. If you've understand quantum mechanics, we, we know that all, all things in nature are made of energy. I know this because Colossians 1, 15 through 17 tells us that Jesus is the one that holds all things together. And if we understand science and we understand kind of quantum mechanics, we understand that things need to be held together, right? If we can break down atoms and find that there's this uh, vibrational frequency holding them together, I believe that, that the Bible is telling us it is the power of Christ that's holding it all together from the stars in the sky to the cells in our bodies. He's intimately associated and aware. He placed all the stars and he placed the cells in my body. He placed me in the family I'm in. He gave me and hardwired my gifting. We know that's true from scripture. We, we just read Psalm 139 and you'll read of all the ways he is intimately and intricately and intentionally placed us where we are and with who we are. And so that energy is what our thoughts are made of. Uh, thoughts are something that we can't necessarily control. I struggle with intrusive thoughts. Anyone? Like if we were in a classroom, I would say, who struggles with intrusive thoughts here? I struggle with some intrusive 
thoughts. And that those intrusive thoughts sometimes I I can't control when they pop into my mind, right? I can't I can't control when or what necessarily pops into my mind. That thing that pops into our mind generally is is a neutral thought. Sometimes it's not, but uh, it's really stress refers to how I respond to that thought, right? How do I respond to that thought? That is what becomes or makes that thought stressful or not. So they're made of energy. They're generally neutral. And in general, our body's responses to any kind of a thought we have, whether we label it good or whether we label it bad, is to protect us. So for instance, my central nervous system and my autonomic nervous system, if you think autonomic, think automatic. That's how I always think of it. It's what happens and the biological processes that happen as soon as you think something, right? And that, that thinking of something could be neutral. That thinking of something could really, really scare you, right? That would be a stress response. If I love finger quotes. That would be a stress response in you. Um, and so a biological process to that stress response is to protect you. That is a good thing. That's not a bad thing. We have in our autonomic nervous system, we have a few different responses. Fight, flight, freeze, or the one that's gotten a lot of understanding recently is fawn. And it's very closely related to freeze, but it's like a submitting to what's happening, right? And I think we, our, our autonomic nervous system, it's if, if there's any other anatomy nerds in there, if they are, heart, let me know. I've got a bunch of anatomy nerds here with me, please. Let me know that I'm not the only one weird that's here. But um, what happens is I think our sympathetic nervous system gets a bad rap. Like, oh, it's fight or flight is bad. Fight or flight is not bad. Thank you. I see you. I see you. Um, fight or flight is not bad. It is good. It's what makes it so that when we're little and we touch a burner, we won't go touch a burner again. It's what causes us to make certain reflexive decisions that protect us. Above and beyond that, just your normal body processes. You wouldn't be breathing right now without your sympathetic nervous system. Your heart wouldn't be beating right now without your sympathetic nervous system. You wouldn't be able to fire muscles to work out. Hey, Revelation Wellness, right? You wouldn't be able to fire muscles to work out without your sympathetic nervous system. It is a good thing. Though... When we start to view a neutral thought or a neutral thing that is not dangerous as stressful, that's when our bodies start to respond. So these are normal biological processes that are good. So what happens is as we start to have experiences in our life, when we have things that make us feel unsafe, which, hello, we live in a broken and hurting world. Uh, people unwittingly make us feel unsafe experiences in our life unwitting, unwittingly make us feel unsafe. Maybe we didn't have the greatest parents and we experienced, like if your story is anything like mine, I come from extreme um, physical and emotional abuse in my background. So neutral things in my life were taught to me to be very scary. So very neutral things that my husband doesn't get afraid of, my kids doesn't get, don't get afraid of, I get afraid of because I had some uh, negative experiences growing up with certain things that caused me to experience fear. So our thoughts, these thoughts, these very neutral things, they become matter. They become physical substance in our body. Initially, it's just a thought that pops into our mind. But our body has to do something with our thoughts, right? So our brain first does something with our thoughts, right? This is something that in Project Stress Relief, Elisa goes into depth with in our lecture and video teachings. What does the neuroscience of a thought look like? Understanding that is really helpful for you learning how to respond to a thought and decide if something is stressful or not. Right? So I'm just kind of hitting high level things here, but actually in Project Stress Relief, Elisa goes kind of in depth in brain teaching and this big fancy $4 million word called neuroplasticity, our brain's ability to change based on our thoughts, right? So our body starts to respond to these very neutral things thoughts, right? Uh, one of the things that I, I always say is your, you have a testimony written on your body on your person. The central nervous system is the pen and the endocrine system is the ink. 
So every thought that you have is writing on your body. Every abusive experience I've had is, is written on my body. And my body remembers all of those experiences. And so because my body remembers all of those experiences, I respond to almost every one of my thoughts, right? Until I'm trained in how to learn to respond to those thoughts instead of react to those thoughts. Anybody? Anybody uh, raising teenagers out there? I just finished raising two. I have a 20-year-old and 18-year-old, and then I have an almost 13-year-old living at home with me now. Um, and so I'm still raising teenagers. Teenagers are an excellent uh, example of reacting to things versus learning to respond to things, right? So we want to train our bodies to honor the story that's written on them, right? It's not a bad thing. It's not a horrible thing that you have a story written on your body. That's a really good thing. In my uh, classes, I always teach, like, you might be able to do this certain movement that someone else can't do, and that is not a bad thing. You don't have to whip your body into submission to be able to do this thing. You might have delivered children. Your humorous bone might be shorter than someone else's, right? That's not a bad thing. Um, so what begins to happen is these neutral things that are our thoughts, they get written on our body. They become matter. How? How do they how do how do these neutral electric thoughts become matter? Well, our endocrine system begins to respond to our thoughts. So our hormones. Twofold. Some of our organs and glands make hormones and some of um, our brain makes uh, neurotransmitters, these chemical communicators that then responded to these sometimes neutral thoughts and began to correspond and interact with our bodies. So the way they work is our cells have receptors on it. So if this is a cell, it has a receptor on it, right? And when we get scared and our central nervous system responds, it's electrical. It just sings a zing of electricity. As soon as it's in, it's out. It's like turning on a light and turning it on. Our hormones don't work that way. Our hormones, when they respond to something, they kick a bunch of hormones out into your bloodstream. And then whatever cells have a receptor on it for that hormone or neurotransmitter will respond, whether your body intended for it to or not. Right? So we have this twofold response to our thoughts. We have electrical activity from our central nervous system and we have hormones. Here's the way I always tell the story. So my family, we love to scare each other. <laughs> Sounds so silly. We love to scare each other. So I have been known, you guys, I'm going to confess this to you. I have been known to stand outside my son's room, knowing he's about to come out or the bathroom or whatever, like hiding, crouched down, ready to scare him because we just do this as a family, right? Um, so if someone were to do that and you walked out of the room and you went, ah, right? You responded to this neutral thing, me going, ah, right? But in your response, your body in seconds is trying to respond. Do I fight, flee, freeze, or am I submitting to this? Am I gonna fawn? Like, what am I doing, right? And what it's trying to do in that moment to decide what to do is it's trying to figure out, am I in danger or not? Is this my mom just being goofy and jumping out at me? Or is this an actual intruder who is gonna harm me? See, that's what your body's always trying to do with these thoughts. And some of them can be neutral and no big deal. And some of them can be actually really harmful. You could actually be in danger. Or one of the buzzwords I'm gonna use, you could be getting triggered. In other words, the stimulus in front of you, the thought you're having, reminds you of a previous activity that happened. And so your brain, specifically what they call the smoke alarm in the psychological world, um, Bessel van der Kirk wrote the book, The Body Keeps the Score. I know many of you have probably been familiar with that or read that. It's the concept that your body remembers and therefore your body's involved in healing from anything talk therapy and uh, all those things are really wonderful. I have a therapist, um, but it's not the only thing that you need to heal, you also need to move. And so what happens is, if my son had actually been harmed in that way, his body and brain would go, you're in danger, fight, or run away, right? Or decide you're gonna participate, right? In, in by not doing anything, right? Um, not decide you're going to participate. That was a bad explanation of fawning. But do you see what I'm saying? Like it could be a very neutral thing, just a goofy thing, mom jumping out at me. But 
his brain is deciding what it's going to do to that neutral thing. So what happens is that endocrine system responds and it sends out stress hormones because it doesn't know if you're gonna to decide to fight or flee. It just knows that either way, you're gonna need adrenaline and cortisol in your muscles. Because no matter what happens, this is scary and stressful. And so if you were ever in that circumstance where you got scared, you know, there's that initial zing that you feel up your abdomen, that's your central nervous system, that's electrical. But then the resulting three, four, five minutes of you going, oh my gosh, right? All that is your body pumping those hormones back out. It imprinted on your body. It didn't just all happen in here. All those hormones touched literally went inside and back out of your cells. And so now it's, it's, it's in your person, it's in your body, right? Because what your body's job is, what your brain's job is, the amygdala in your brain is to go, I'm never going to get hurt again. I'm not going to allow that to happen again. I am going to imprint this on my brain and my body, and I'm gonna make sure that if I'm in that circumstance again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna deal with it in a way uh, where I won't get hurt. Because that central nervous system, that autonomic nervous system, that's a division of your central nervous system, it's there to protect you. Like I said, it's a good thing. But when it starts to respond to neutral things or goofy things or everyday things as if you're always in danger, that becomes not a good thing. When that becomes not a good thing, we start to live out of fight or flight. We start to live out of that space. And so here's kind of a, a hmm, what, what word do I want to use? Here's kind of a, kind of a scary thought, right? So um, Thomas Myers, I love Thomas Myers. He's the writer of Anatomy Trains. He's the anatomy book that I use in all of my personal teaching. And as a body worker and an anatomy teacher, we, we taught from a lot of his material. One of the things that he talks about with a few of his friends is we tend to decision make from two places in our brain, history and expectation. Here's what that means. We tend to make decisions based on what happened to us, history, and what we think will happen to us, expectation. So if you like break that down for a second, we're literally not dealing with reality <laughs> when we're making decisions. Unless you're being intentionally mindful to question yourself, which I'm going to talk about that in just a second. Unless you're being intentionally mindful to question your responses to things, you're probably decision making from two things, history and expectation. What happened to me previously and what I think is going to happen to me, which is getting made from what? What happened to me? All of my expectations in my life are likely coming from what happened to me. So what happens is we're decision-making from being in the past. Great news. <laughs> the Holy Spirit disrupts this whole process. The greatest news ever. The Holy Spirit disrupts this process. Why do we know this? Because Paul in Romans 12 told us to do something. And I don't think it would fall under commands, um, but I, I like to think it was a command because I needed it to, to, to um, really live from a peaceful place in my life, right? And that is this. He says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, okay? This place where those thoughts come in, this place where we decision make from, it's not an organ. It's not your brain. Your brain is just an organ responding to how your mind is. So here's how good God is, because he would not be cruel and he wouldn't tell us to do that if we weren't able to. And that's what science has taught us is we are neuroplastic, right? Elisa's gonna talk about this in uh, her lectures from Project Stress Relief. We are neuroplastic. What does that mean? It means our brains can change. I know, Mimi, right? Like, <laughs> thank you, Jesus, because my parents were unable to give me a great beginning. I'm hardwired in some things Sorry, I'm going to cry a little bit. <laughs> I'm hardwired into some, in some things to be afraid. And so I have had to do a lot of work around training myself in that way. So I'm going to share a testimony with you about some trauma that I experienced. 
and the, some of the results. So um, when I was younger, my mom uh, really tried to keep us away from our father um, and went to great lengths to do that. One of the things that she did at one time was she had um, someone stand outside and throw a hammer into our window at night to make us think it was our dad um, messing with us. So from that moment on, right, I had this experience I was watching TV. I'll never forget it. I think I was about six. I was watching TV and out of nowhere, it, it, this hammer flew by my head and it hit the TV, right? So all my little mind knew was, <gasps> right? I couldn't, my, my brain was frantically working overtime to categorize what just happened. Um, I have no bucket for that. Um, nor if we understand the Genesis story in the garden and the shalom that God created us to be, nor was I made to live in this kind of fear. Thankfully, God made my body to be able to respond. But I, I experienced this fear and you could imagine the resulting fear of being by myself alone at night. I'm 43 <laughs> and it still affects me. And my body still remembers, right? So I can be sitting down somewhere and I can hear something at night. And you guys, that's what a trigger is, right? It all floods my body all over again. Right? So Project Stress Relief is all about us learning how to undo all of that. Because while my body responds the same at a 43-year-old woman from what happened to me when I was six... I now have a transformed mind. And from my transformed mind, I can begin to calm myself, soothe myself, and with me and the Holy Spirit together, I remind myself, you're not that helpless six-year-old anymore. You are a very capable 43-year-old woman. This is not happening again. You're not there again. It's okay, right? There are so many tools that can help you with that because your body does remember. And there are some specific areas that certain experiences like to show up in your body, right? And there's these old um, quotes that we have like shouldering burdens, right? That's intentional, right? We have found that shoulders are an area that some of these thoughts tend to kind of settle in if we feel um, like we're shouldering too many burdens. What will literally happen, let me show you what sometimes can, can quite literally happen, is as we start to live in a chronic state of fight or flight, our, our traps, these muscles, this, this head of our musculature right here, that's called your traps, right? And we'll start to just do this, right? Because we're thinking these stressful, stressful thoughts and we'll start to hold tightness in one area of our body. And we're literally holding, if you will, the thoughts there, right? Because what are you doing? What's your body doing by doing that? It's getting ready, right? When you throw a punch, when you're about to fight or flee, you're not going to go like this and bring your hands behind your back and expose your most vulnerable areas, are you? No, you're going to come here. Right? I'm going to turn in, I'm going to lift my shoulders, I'm going to drop my head, I'm going to collapse right here, and I'm going to get ready. And what am I doing? I'm taking all my vital organs and I'm protecting them because I'm going to fight. So that's what happens when we start to have these thoughts settle in our body. Um, our hips. Our hips are a very common area when we feel unsupported, right? Our hips are the core of our body, right? Um, any, I know, I know our core, like our belly musculature gets all the glory for, <laughs> uh, being the powerhouse of our body and the place, but really any muscle that attaches onto your pelvis. So your thigh muscles, your abdominal muscles, your obliques, all those things, any of those things that attach onto your pelvis are your core. And that is one of the areas of the body we have the most support. And so it's not uncommon as a body worker, I found it's not uncommon for years and years and years when someone would come in and say, um, I would say, is there any particular area you would like me to focus on? And they would say, oh, my little back has been bothering me. And the very first question I would ask is, so what's going on um, in your stress life, right? And what I would start to listen for is, do you feel unsupported? If you 
feel unsupported. There is this tightness and this clenching that tends to happen in our glutes. Like think about clenching your glutes and clenching your teeth, right? We get all stressed and we start to clench when we don't feel support. And that can be for so many reasons, right? We could not be asking for what we need. We could actually be unsupported in certain situations in our life or our work, our work environment or things like that. So there are these very specific places where things tend to show up. Um, I'll tell you, for me, one of the areas um, I will, not, not all the time, um, but I will often wake up with a headache and one of the things when one is nervous or scared and we lift our, our shoulders up like this, we have to keep functioning in our daily life. So our, our tendency is not to put our head down. Our tendency is to put our head up like this. So we're, what we're trying to do in our stress response is we're opening our eyes and we're taking in as much as possible. Because remember, in my stress response, I have to decide, am I running? Am I fighting? Am I, am I frozen in fear or am I deciding to submit to this experience, right? Those are high level look at the four responses that we have. And so I tend to often wake up with this area right here really tight and I, I sleep like this, right? So I sleep with my chin jutted out and then it doesn't help that I'm a side sleeper. I love sleeping like this and that's like horrible for your neck. <laughs> A whole, a teaching for another time, right? But um, I tend to wake up and I'll, and I will kind of think through, okay, did I have a dream? Did it like what happened that in my sleep I was feeling that tension and fear, right? So our thoughts are generally neutral, right? It's how we respond to our thoughts that make them stressful. And then we're responding, we're trying to respond, respond to our thoughts and we're tr generally using history, what's happened to us, and what we think is gonna to happen to us to decide how we're gonna to respond to our thoughts, right? So that's that's generally kind of how they get, they get stuck in various areas of the body. And like I said, there are different areas of the body that they tend to get stuck. We've got that carrying the weight of the world on our shoulders, the lack of support. It even comes in when like a mom yells at their kids. So you can't, you can't see me right now, but I'm holding my hands on my hips, right? Like, Johnny, Suzanne, Goodmanson, get over here, right? You're, they're getting yelled at because they didn't do something they were supposed to. And as moms, hello, we don't always get the support we need. So we even it sometimes will touch the area of our body. Um, it, we, we tend to see this too in, in defeat. In defeat, we tend to collapse in around our heart if we feel defeated, right? That's why power poses. Have you guys, are you familiar with power poses, right? Power poses are start, starting to be a big thing in on, on things because what we found, and this is something Elisa talks about in your lectures and something that um, Mimi kind of walks you through in some of our audio recordings is this idea that you're, if, if the mind part can't get on board yet, the body can get the mind on board and the mind can get the body on board. So we found that even if you don't feel powerful, you can open your heart and lean forward with it and put your head up and you can begin to start to affect your thoughts. We've known this for years, you guys, the science has responded this for years, smile, smile, and it will begin to affect your mood. So we've got our mind that can help to heal and transform our body, but we can also use our body to begin and transform our mind, right? One of the things that I want to mention about, you know, when, when the way stuff gets stored in our body, when we experience a similar thing and we get what that, that kind of buzzword triggered, right? When we get triggered, our body doesn't know the difference between the thing happening again or if it's completely neutral, right? So we need that mind transformation because our higher reasoning happens right here in the frontal lobe. Um, and I, 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 I know that I know our mind, it's not something that you could, when you, if you were to dissect me after I die and study my body, you wouldn't go, okay, here's the brain, here's the heart, here's the liver, here's the spleen, here's the mind. The mind isn't an organ. The mind is a gift of God to us in a way that he allows through our soul direct connection to him so that we can be, begin to experience healing. And when our body starts to respond to something as if it's happening all over again, we can, we can cha tra uh, train it, we can teach it.
So that's what Project Stress Relief is all about. We want to teach you how to do these things. Um, we have um, audio lectures, uh, excuse me, video lectures, where Elisa comes in and explains some of the sciencey stuff with this. If any of you guys have learned from Elisa very often, she brings her brain and she starts to explain to you how the brain works. Why is that helpful? Why do you need to know that? Because if you can understand the why behind something physiologically, biologically happening in your body, then you take its power over you. You take your power back. And I can remind my little six-year-old in me, it's not happening again. That's not happening again. And then I can start to employ tools, which is something that we've given you through Project Stress Relief or the audio recordings, things like breathwork techniques, body scan, be still and be loved, meditations to help you learn to integrate tools that you can then start to employ in your daily life when you're not around the tools. Uh, it's a 21 day challenge and that's intentional because it takes about 21 days to undo some of that stuff in our brain. 21 days is when you start to have these little baby trees. One of the scientists that I love to learn from calls them baby trees. These baby trees in your brain for new thoughts and going in a new and different direction. It's exactly what Paul's talking about in Romans 12. Being transformed by the renewing of our mind. And then when our mind starts to get renewed, the actual shape and topography, the folds in our brain, if you've ever seen in a, in a, on TV or anything, or even Elisa's brain that she carries around, they have what are called folds. The folds of that, the topography, the actual terrain of your brain can be changed through what? Your mind. And that's why I think it was very intentional that Paul was said, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. He, he, why would he choose that? right? He would just say, be connected by your soul to God, right? Well, I love, I, personally, Paul is one of my favorite teachers of all time because he was a teacher's teacher. So if you ever see repetitive things in scripture, it's often Paul because a good teacher repeats things. They know people need to hear that. And Paul tells us often to, to be renewed. He says it in different ways, but he really speaks specifically to the process of the cross. Cohabitate with Jesus, be co-crucified with Jesus. That co-crucifixion is going to lead to a liminal space, right? A time in between the crucifixion and then the we get to be co-resurrected. If you are curious, like Colossians, it's a short little book. Um, it's one of my favorite books besides Romans 12, where he tells us to be transformed by the renewing of mind. And I love it because it's all about you are a new creation. You are not that old person. Your biology as it stands right now, you are one deep breath away from that changing. You are one deep breath away. That's what baptism is, right? We take this physical, for all of us who love to work out, right? We take this physical symbol of I am going to go down into the water. I'm going to identify physically with Christ's sufferings and I'm going to rise up out of that water and I'm going to identify physically with being a resurrected new alive being and that can happen every 30 seconds with a long deep breath so through project stress relief we wanted to give you the tools for that i do want to talk just a little bit about daily stress though um, i really love um, learning from john mark comer he's a pastor out of um, portland and he has this really great series on sabbath rest where he kind of gives some stats and things like that and he mentions a time in the 1700s where they tried to introduce a 10 day work week right they tried to introduce a 10 day work week and he's talking about the importance of us remembering the sabbath right um and he speaks with some specific stats in that to suicide rates going through the roof when they tried to do that i want to say the internet I love it because I wouldn't be able to be here with you right now, right? So the internet is, it's wonderful. God has used it for his glory. Look at Revelation Wellness. Look at what's all been done. Look at how many thousands of people you're going to be doing Project Stress Relief with because of the internet. In all these different countries and all over the United States, right? You're going to get to do that because of the internet. It's a wonderful thing. You know what it's also done is it's made it so we could go back to 10-day work weeks. It's made it so that we can work 24 hours a day. Um, Revelation Wellness, our COO, Matt Galls, is really intentional with all of us because this very phone that I'm talking to you on, it's how, as a staff member, I work with Revelation Wellness. 
So I have people able to access me 24 hours a day. And if you're anything like me, I'll confess to you, I sleep with it next to my bed because I don't have an alarm and it's my alarm. But I have had to go to great lengths to insulate myself from people being able to reach me 24 seven. So when I go to bed, I have no notifications. I do have two kids who live away from home because they're adults, so I do have my ringer on and they know to call me if there's an emergency because I don't have a ding for texts. I don't have a ding for when I get a Facebook message or anything like that because what that does is through a stress response, I begin to have a reaction every time I hear that ding. Do you remember the psychological uh, story of Pavlov's dog? where they would hit a button, ding, they would smell meat. Hit a button, ding, they would smell meat. And after a while, all they did had to do was hear the ding and then they would salivate. The meat didn't even have to come back into the picture because they were hormonally now wired exactly through the process I've been teaching about this whole time to respond to that ding. You guys, that's exactly what we're doing when we have a bunch of notifications on our phone. So even beyond the really, you know, hard stuff that we go through in our lives, we, we, we have to encourage each other, hey, rest. That's great that you have access to work from home, but rest, turn off your phone sometimes, get away from your phone sometimes. We don't wanna have 10 day work weeks. It causes us to exist and live in fight or flight. So Matt will encourage us, hey, turn your notifications off. When you're on vacation, actually be on vacation. Like turn them off and be away from your phone. So we weren't designed to work 24 seven, 10, 20, 30 days at a time. We need to shut off daily, right? When I start to get stressed over a project that needs to get done or something that's coming up, a trip I have coming up, or I just dropped my daughter off at college and I'm like, how am I gonna get everything done? I always remind myself, Johnny, you have a Sabbath of eight hours every single day. It's called sleeping. You don't have to get all this done today. You have a Sabbath rest. And then tomorrow, we're gonna, we're, we can get back at it again. It doesn't all have to get done today. So stress can also just be the daily stress of our life. And, but again, the daily stress of our life is neutral. That ding on your phone is neutral. It's how you respond to it. And so this is kind of the last part of what I want to teach about. It's, if it's how we respond to it, then what's important to us to remember is that we're in the driver's seat. We're in the driver's seat of these responses. And if stress is neutral, then I get to choose how I want to respond to stress. I, instead of reacting out of fight or flight, I have tools and tips and tricks and um, things to employ to do that transforming and renewing of our mind so that when those neutral things begin to come in, like the ding on my phone telling me I have a text or an email to read, then I can choose whether in that moment I respond to it or not. That's an important part of what we do. So the last part of, of the project stress relief that, that is going to be a big piece of that is the devotional. Because our power to do this does not just come from us. Because who among us knows, I don't have the power to do that. <laughs> if I did, I would have no stress responses. I don't have the power to do that. I would have no stress responses. But I am intimately in relationship with the one who does have the power to do that. And for that reason, for me, as a, as a, as a teacher of embodying faith, one of the most powerful aspects of the characteristic, characteristics of God is his sovereignty. I know that those who struggle to decide who God is don't like that piece of who God is, like that he's just this all-seeing, all-knowing judge eye in the sky with his thumb on us. But as someone who was raised not in a safe environment, not in a trusting environment, not in a space where I was free to just be a child, the fact that there is a loving, good, relational, trustworthy, faithful God in charge of it all is so comforting to me because it reminds me I'm not in charge of it all. I, in fact, one of my other favorite pastors that I love to learn from says, you make a really crappy God. And can I just tell you all listening, ready, lean in, look at my eyeballs. You make a really crappy God. <laughs> 
You, you're not the God of your marriage. You're not the God of your children. You're not the God of your household. You're not the God of your city. You're not, right? You're not a God. And when we think it's all on our shoulders, we are placing ourselves in the position of God. And so I just have this little visual. I'll never forget this, ever forget this. Elisa told me when Revelation Wellness was first started to be born in her gut and God was just downloading what she wanted it to look like. She said sometimes she feels like a lap dog on God's lap and he's just petting her and whispering all these wonderful things into her ear. And he whispers, I, you know, I'm going to build Revelation Wellness and this, this idea. And she goes, awesome. And she jumps off his lap and just starts to run for it. And then she forgets she's on a leash and she gets pulled back, right? Where God goes, no, no, no. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. I'm not putting it all on your shoulders. I'm just telling you what I'm doing, right? So one of the, the most comforting aspects of who God is, is he's sovereign. It is not all on your shoulders. It is not all expected for you to figure it all out. Insert it all, your life, here. It's not all on you. You have the sovereign God, capital T, the sovereign God of the universe on your side. Scripture says in various areas that he's behind us, he's beside us, and he goes before us. You are literally surrounded by love, by goodness, by trustworthiness, by faithfulness, right? He bends his knee to hear us. Romans also tells us that the Holy Spirit and Jesus, when we are in need and cry out, start praying with us to God, right? So when we have these stressful experiences, be they actual, because I want to make sure that you don't walk away from here thinking, oh, all stress is neutral and no one's ever in danger. That's not true. Some of us have very, very painful stories of having been in real danger, right? Though we also know that through the power of God, he is with us in those experiences. He, is, he was never not by my side in the story of my childhood. I can look back and I can see him all over my story. And now he's taken that story, he's transformed it, and now my life's work is to teach how to overcome issues like I experienced in childhood, right? So he says in Romans 8, my favorite chapter of the whole Bible, if you, haven't, if you have time today, read Romans 8. Like just, it's the best one in my opinion, <laughs> in my humble opinion. Um, he says it'll turn out for my good and his glory. Well, I, I believe that my life is glorifying him in what I do. And it is certainly turning out for my good in the way that he has chosen to use me. So I hope that you will join us for Project Stress Relief. Uh, it will help you with all the things I've talked about here. You get um, these video lectures that will help you understand the more sciencey aspect of that. You will get audio tools that will help you functionally. It's like, great, Johnny, this is a lot of wonderful information. Awesome. What the heck do I do with all this? That's what those audios are for. Um, Mimi has, has put in painstaking effort to equip you with tools that you then can practice with us through this challenge and then take them into your daily life. And then you get these devotionals that help that rewiring and understanding of how God interacts with us through our story to help our responses to things become responses and not reactions. So Project Stress Relief. You guys, registration ends in like two days. You got to sign up. It's in the comments right now. You got to join brothers and sisters from all over the world because the, the, the worship that comes as we all join in this together, it will be monumental. You can join for any donation amount. We suggest $15, but listen, just join, just join. And then here's the other thing. When you do it with someone else, when you invite someone else into it, you know you, you also invite a commitment to stick to it because you're doing it with someone else, which brings accountability. But then also that person represents the image of God too. You will also learn from them. You will have someone to pray with. You will have someone to talk it through with. You'll have someone to process it with. Isn't it so beneficial to process it with someone who's going through the exact same thing? So grab your husband, grab your wife, grab your friends, grab your small group at church, put it on your social media, you guys. Any donation amount, and I'm telling you the value of information that you get from this, it's worth so much. 
And we just want to make it available for what you can do. So again, the suggested donation is $15, but just, just get in there and do it. You have until Thursday. The link to sign up is in the comments. Copy, paste it. Get it out to your friends and family. And I can't wait to do it with you. I've got a small group that I'm doing it with. There's seven of us so far. So join us. Get involved. We appreciate you. I hope you have enjoyed this teaching. I prayed for you before I came to this because I just know that if there's something that God brought to mind as I was talking, if there's a piece of this that you identified with and made you tear up a little bit or made you laugh or you're like, oh, that is my thing, he's talking to you about it. There's You're ready for some healing if that's happening. So Join us. We want to go on that healing journey with you. I thank you so much for being here with me today. If you didn't get to be here live, this will be on the t page for you to, to watch and revisit. And I, I'll see you in Project Stress Relief. Have the most amazing day.